Gorka, aside from Russia, the message also being sent to Iran and even North Korea. Absolutely, Griff. Absolutely. Last night was about our response morally to the atrocious weapons that are chemical weapons, but also, more importantly, it's a message to anybody who supports this kind of regime and also may be thinking, like North Korea, may be thinking about their own potential use of mm -hmm. weapons of mass destruction. So on, on all counts, morally, when it comes to our national security, that these weapons should not be used against our people, our citizens, and when it comes to other nations who need to be read the right. Act. Mm -hmm. Yesterday's uh, intervention served all of those purposes at the same time. Dr. Gorky, you hate to get political in moments like this, but of course the haters of this president immediately do so, saying he doesn't have the ability or right to strike, uh, he doesn't have a plan. What do you say to their, constant, their sudden constitutional arguments that this is not an action he could have or should have taken as commander-in-chief? It's funny. So uh, I, I didn't hear them criticizing the last president when in one weekend he bombed seven countries. In one weekend, our forces were engaged in seven different nations around the world. I didn't hear much protesting from the Democrats when, this, when the last president, President Obama, without due process, with a Hellfire missile, killed a U.S. citizen and his son in Yemen. Funny, if, if the mm. left didn't have double standards, they wouldn't have any standards at all. <laughs> and, and the president, according to Article 2, he is absolutely in his constitutional authority to use military force when there is an exigent system. This is a, this situation. There is, this isn't a state of war. We're not invading another country. This isn't 1941. There was a threat to the international mm. order, and we had to take action. Well, and it's important, because you you mentioned the Obama years. It's so important to look back on that time in history because that's ultimately what led us to right here yes. what we are dealing with yes. today. So let's just take a look back at some of those moments back with uh, Obama, uh, Rice, and John Kerry. We have been very clear to the Assad regime. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. We could cut the deal that got 100% of the declared chemical weapons out of Syria. We were able to find a solution that actually removed the chemical weapons that were known from Syria in a way that the use of force would never have accomplished. Uh, you heard it there, 100% of the chemical weapons gone. I, I give your team full credit who's working in the background. The We've got some great had, producers on our the team. Fact that, the fact that you had that ready is, is superb. Yeah, I mean, look, that's, that's why we're here. We had eight years of what? Think about it. We're the last commander-in-chief say we're going to lead from behind. Well, Pete Hegseth, how many people do you know? How many officers lead from behind? Mm -hmm. It's an oxymoron, right? You can't lead from behind. They talked about strategic patience, which means what? We're not going to do anything. We're going to let other actors act. Well, what happened? We had a Dantean inferno around the world because of that lack of American leadership. We had Russia invade Ukraine. We had the rise of ISIS. We had China building fake islands with military bases on them. We had have, we have the JCPOA Iran deal that actually strengthened and emboldened Iran, which is the key sponsor of Assad. That all changed at 12.01 on January the 20th when Donald Trump became president. And now he's fixed all the disastrous policy mistakes made by Kerry, Clinton and Obama.